All right, let's answer a question. Somebody wrote to me, I am not getting on with Python as it appears to be a language that is used mainly in FinTech and data analysis in my part of the country. It looks like I will just continue with my web development for the next months to come. So let me answer a couple questions. Yes, well, I'll read this and I'm gonna comment. These are my comments back to this questioner. Yes, Python is largely used in the specializations you mentioned, FinTech, etc. Um, I've mentioned that a few times. That said, I would still suggest you learn it because overall, it will make you a developer, a better developer, even if you never use it. You see, one of the things I preach on this channel that it's a good idea, it's a good idea to uh, learn multiple languages. So the, the ones I teach are Python, JavaScript, and PHP. These are proper programming languages. I also teach SQL, which is another, it's another, it's a coding language, it's a fourth gen language. It's not really a programming language, but anyway, whatever. It's the language of databases. I recommend that you learn multiple languages because every time I learned a new language, my skills as a developer just went pew, rocket right up. It was pretty substantial because all these languages, all the modern languages, whether it be Java, C Sharp, uh, C++, Python, JavaScript, uh, PHP, etc., etc., they all share so many of the same qualities, but they look at things from a different point of view. It's kind of like dating. If you date one person, you're only going to have a very narrow perspective about what it is to date somebody. But if you date like you know a whole bunch of people over time, you're going to have a much more um, realistic and deeper understanding of human nature and dating dynamics and so forth. Maybe that's not the best analogy. Maybe just driving cars or using computers. You use 10 computers, you're gonna have a much better idea of what it is, uh, how computers operate, generally speaking. So you can compare and contrast operating systems, hardware, etc. Or video games, first person shooters. Play this first person shooter, that first person shooter, etc. If you do like, you know, you play five or six shooter games, your appreciation, understanding of the subtleties will makes a good first person shooter will just shoot up and you become, you're gonna become a better gamer overall. Same thing with programming. Learn multiple languages. Those are the ones I suggest, but whatever ones you want to, cool. So he goes on to ask these questions. What do you think of Swift? I have read that it was meant to be an easy to learn language. So my response to Swift is cool, but it is a niche language that I think will become, I think that Swift is gonna become more niche simply because web tech for cross-platform mobile app development is becoming more and more capable. And then you have things like Flutter. Uh, yeah, Swift is a cool language though. It's a great language, very sophisticated, but I think that's a niche language. It's gonna be around for years, don't get me wrong. But I think there's a lot more opportunity in other areas. Nonetheless, even if you learn Swift and you find there are no opportunities, which I doubt, I think you'd find opportunities. But if, if, if for some reason you didn't, all that Swift skills, all those Swift knowledge and skills that you developed would transfer perfectly into many of the languages. So it's not a big deal. Uh, number two, what do you think is going to be easier to learn, JavaScript or Swift? That's difficult to say. Swift is more consistent. JavaScript has its weird idiosyncrasies. It's a strange language. Inconsistent in some ways, but it's still a very powerful language. Overall, I'd say perhaps the same, because JavaScript is really easy to get started. Any web browser, boom, you're running JavaScript. Swift, you have to install Xcode. There's a bit more of a headache in that regard. But that's a one-time thing. I think JS has many more applications uh, in terms of what's how it's being applied. It could be used for you know, client-side development, uh, it could be used for, it's used in full stack, of course, it could be used for game development, although it's not used too often. It could be used all over the place. So JavaScript is just a much more flexible language in terms of market, the market out there, and in terms of uh, technical uh, application. And question number three, do you, do you use Swift? Uh, I have in the past, but not commercially. And in fact, I actually started a Swift site when it just came out called Swift Playgrounds. I wrote a few uh, high-level pieces on that, and I decided not to continue because I saw that it was, I thought it was gonna become a niche language, and I decided to go more broad, stick to the web stack. I'm, as you can tell, I'm a big believer that the web stack is gonna continue to dominate going forward. 
Now, something I wrote, I always gauge languages based on market value, number one, the project that I'm working on at that particular moment, and number two, tech efficiency, and in that order. Market value to me is a huge part of it because at the end of the day, I think most of us are learning to code to make the money, right? Most are doing it to make the money. Um, so when you get into freelance, then you, and you get more high level, then you go beyond a particular language or stack, if you will, and you start looking at languages and you're looking at technology in terms of application to a particular project at hand. Sometimes it makes sense to go uh, non-native for uh, mobile development. Sometimes it makes sense to go native. Sometimes you want to go PHP Laravel. Sometimes you just want to go WordPress. Sometimes you may want to go Python Django. It depends. So my suggestion to this guy, since he already started a Python course, I would suggest just finish it, especially since you're doing Studio Web Python with the interactive and the quizzing, because it's just going to help you become a much better developer much more quickly. It's going to jumpstart the process because you're going to learn how Python looks at a whole bunch of things that all programming languages do. And so then when you finish the Python, which you finish pretty quickly, then you can move into JavaScript. And JavaScript is going to be so much easier because you already have the Python background. Or you jump into PHP. It's going to be so much easier because you have the Python background. And vice versa. If you know JavaScript now and you're thinking of a second language, my first choice, especially if you're freelancing, would be PHP, of course, then SQL. But uh, if you're looking just to get a deeper understanding of programming, then I would do the Python. One of the things I do with my courses is that I'll have a course, I have a course like uh, JavaScript Foundations, I have, I have Beginner's Python, I have PHP Foundations, but they actually all work together. I will cover the same material because you know, there's variables and functions and methods and arrays, all these type of things in, the, in each of these languages. It's common in all programming languages, but I'll, I'll explore certain areas a little bit more deeply than I would in others. So for example, with the PHP, I really get into the uh, the full stack, the the client server type of interaction with with uh, with code. With Python, I get uh, into besides all the foundations, I get into more uh, the GUI application and and, and the design, etc. And JavaScript, etc. You get the idea. So I'm able to explore different specializations of programming in general in these different languages because they just lend themselves sometimes better to certain things. Anyway, I hope that helps. That's it for this vlog. Bye-bye.